Well, I'll just start by saying I have no idea what I'm doing right now, <laughs> but um, I think that I'm going to try and tell you what I do and who I am. And um, if you guys have questions, uh, I'm happy to answer them as well as I can. Um, but I might ramble. So if I'm on a topic for too long and you guys are bored, just tell me. We'll move on. No biggie. Um, so um, I guess what I should start out with is um, how I uh, how I got started with cat cleaners and uh, what my role is within the company. And then I'll go into a little bit of background about where I came from before I got here. So um, I am the office manager, I'm the operations manager, I'm the uh, person on the ground doing the consults. I basically do everything that I can do uh, to support Carrie so that she can focus on growing the business uh, further. Um, and uh, how I start got like how I started working for Cat Cleaners was a bit of a, a battle. Uh, Carrie had asked me for many years, "Please come work for me. Please come work for me." And I thought, I don't really want to work for my mom. I don't think that I enjoy cleaning. Um, I personally, um, I don't clean my own house. I hire my own teams to do that for me. Um, and I didn't know that I didn't know that what Carrie was doing was to this scale. Uh, she kind of kept it to herself. Um, but one day um, in my previous job, I was um, I was work I was working from home because it was during COVID, and um, I had this really really terrible meeting with my with my manager, um, and it just kind of put me in a place where I thought I don't want to do this anymore. Why am I sitting here crying on a Zoom call? Um, for, for somebody who doesn't uh, respect what I do as, a, as an individual and what I do for their company. So um, at that time, I was actually in the Okanagan visiting Carrie for her birthday, crying on the Zoom call. And I thought, screw this, I'm done. And I went to her and I asked her if that job was still available. And she didn't actually have a job available. <laughs> Once I found out, she didn't have a job available, but she created one um, for me. Um, and in turn, I have helped her um, transform this business into what it is now. And it's not, it's not just Carrie's business, it's, it's our business and we do it together. Um, so just a little bit about what I was doing before. Um, I used to sell excavators, big, 20 ton excavators, lots of fun, big rock trucks, brush chippers. Uh, I worked in the heavy machinery industry. Um, I worked in sales. I worked on the ground. I worked with logistics. A lot of talking to people, getting to know them, a lot of problem solving. You know, can't get this machine here on this day, but if I pay a little bit extra, will it work out for me? I learned so much in my three years at that dealership that I really think does benefit me today. But I think that I think that working there, I lost myself. I didn't know myself anymore. Um, and before that, I worked for a real estate company. And that was a lot of sales too, a lot of organizing, a lot of planning, making sure things get done on a deadline. And before that, I worked at a law office. Um, kind of in the same uh, field as the real estate. So throughout that, I think that I picked up a lot of really um, important skills that have made it um, really easy for me to step into this position and just take it and run. So that's what I did. I, um, I came in to work with Carrie and I said, this and this and this is what I'm really good at. This is what I think I can do. What are we gonna do about it? And we created a, a position that worked with my strengths. So when I, when, you know, when I, when Carrie gets asked the question, how do we find a Brett? Um, I think that my best advice is don't, um, don't turn anybody down just because they have a lot of very weird experience. I worked in real estate. I worked in law. I worked in heavy machinery. And I learned so much that now I put that all together. I know sales. I know how to organize my emails. Carrie doesn't. I had to, I had to overhaul her email system when I came in. Um, I learned so many great things. So if I was looking for somebody to replace me, 
I'd want to know, I want somebody that worked in a couple of different places, but has that, that drive to want to do more. The thing I didn't like about the real estate office is that it was mundane and boring work. I didn't see that there was any, any end in sight. I didn't know what I was doing. What, what was I doing this silly little project for? Whereas now I can take all of that um, organizational skills that I have and put that into something that I know is going to benefit me in the long run. So that's, I think that's how you find a Brett. Just be very um, understanding because it was not easy in the beginning. It, uh, it takes a lot of time to train and a lot of time to, um, it took me a long time to get here <laughs> to say the very least. So um, that being said, um, my mindset before starting my day is always get through the day. And that's when I look back at, you know, the year and a half that I've been doing this, my friend just said it to me on a phone call. It feels like I'm watching a movie. She's watching me in a movie. She said, it's amazing how you've done this and you've created this. Um, and it feels like I'm watching somebody else do it. And I feel the same way because when I look at it, I feel like I've just been getting through every day. I always say every day is one step closer to Friday. And I really mean that. Um, so I just get through the day. But when I look back, I've helped carry, uh, create a six figure business that, that works really well. So really proud of that. Um, but it's, it wasn't easy. Last, uh, last summer was probably the hardest summer of my entire life. And I look back at it and it was also the most important and I grew so much from it. So really thankful for that. So I guess the hardest part of my job is quieting down that voice in my head that's telling me, oh, you can put that off. Oh, you don't need to do that right now. No, you don't need to call that client back. You know, I have to sit down and say, no, I have to call this, this, this person right now. And if I don't do it right now, it's not going to get done. So I think that's probably the hardest part of my job. And also, you know, the, the motivation. Um, I have an assistant. She works one week on, one week off. And so she works Wednesday to Wednesday. So I've had, well, like Thursday I worked from home, but today I have the whole office to myself. And I could sit here and watch um, Instagram videos all day and nobody would know. And that's just as tough when you're working from home. So I think the hardest part of my job is sitting down and going, I'm doing it. Here I am, let's get it done. So that's the motivation. But when you've got all of this stuff going on and um, you're really passionate about it, it starts to come back. So <sighs> that's who I am. Yeah, the <laughs> get shit done mindset. Yep. Um, it's, it's tough. And I haven't always had that mindset. And I think I think that through COVID, it got a little bit, um, a little bit tougher because there wasn't somebody sitting there watching me peck away on a computer. So it's, uh, you have to be dedicated and motivated to get the job done. But at the end of the day, I do get it all done somehow. Um, so I guess I'll just jump right into what I do for work instead of just who I am. Um, and I'll start off with, um, I'll start off when, when a new prospect comes into the business, what are my next steps? So when, when I get a phone call, I answer it obviously with the best intentions in mind. Um, I try to be as positive and kind as possible when, when I'm talking to a client and I try not to leave the conversation. I do have probably, I guess, a script that I, I do have in my head when, uh, when somebody calls and says, who are you and what are you doing? Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? That's something that I kind of, again, cherry picked over what I found worked over the previous calls, you know? Um, have I fallen flat on my face? Yes. Have I ran out of things to say on the phone? Surprisingly, yes. Um, it's all about responding to the energy that they give me. If they're going to be laughing and um, easy to talk to, I'm going to have a great time. But if they're all business, I'm going to uh, maintain that energy as well. And it's, it's not easy. So I found the things that made me 
able to sell what I need to sell to these to everybody without um, without not being myself because I think that at the end of the day people want to call and talk to me <laughs> and I like that I like to like to talk all I want um, so my next steps to best serve the prospect is a through the marketing channels I try and give them a call right away but again that's the hardest part of my job is telling myself just call them just do it give them the call right now um, and two let them lead the conversation if they're gonna if they want to just book a consult right away I just book the consult I don't want to talk about anything more because I prefer to get in there and show up in person which wasn't always easy during COVID but I prefer to get there in person because I think that you feed off of people's energy better in person so um, I try and just get right to the consult let's book a meeting let's get there let's talk in person I don't like to quote anything just based on um, square footage because then you, you don't you don't get to see the whole scope of work and you don't really um, you can't service the customer or the client as well as you probably could if you were standing there right in front of them saying look at this layer of dirt here I don't think that I like this is totally unacceptable for for my team to leave behind let's take care of it so um, going into the when doing a walkthrough what my process is is um I let the person that I'm meeting lead the consult um, a lot of them like to sit down right away and just get to talking. I prefer to get right down to the dirt. Show me where it is. I don't like to, I don't like to point out dirt to people and say, oh, that's, that's disgusting. It's, oh, there's an area of concern. Let's, let's take care of it. This is something that my teams would be on the lookout for. So my, my process from beginning to end is just to be open. Uh, open to feedback, try and match their energy as well as I can. Sometimes they don't give you anything. A dead room is very daunting. I was at a consult last week where I think if I didn't have Carrie with me, I probably would have walked away in 15 minutes because I wouldn't have had anything to say. But Carrie, she carried it for, I think we we're there for an hour and 45 minutes. And now we have the client. So I'm still learning, lots of things going on. So um, from beginning to end, I just walk in and say, give me the tour. Show me what, show me where your areas of concern are. Let me know um, what you're doing now. I do ask for a task list. In commercial properties, a lot of them will have a task list that will give you a really good scope of work. And if you have that ahead of time, it, it eliminates a lot of questions about what we should be doing. So I asked for the task list if they have it. If they don't, it's pretty easy to make one up because at the end of the day, there's dirt, we gotta clean it. Um, and uh, one thing to note is that I would never put down another cleaner for, for missing other things. I always just try and put it back on my teams and what they are, are capable of and what they will accomplish. Um, I do ask for a budget. They don't always give it to you. Um, but it's it's easy to ask for, and what's the worst thing they can say? No. Then we just go in there with our budget, and we say this is what we think it's going to cost to get this job done to our standards, and make sure that you're taken care of at the end of the day, because that's why you called us. And then most importantly, listen to them, listen to their pain points. They're calling you for a reason. If they want to, if they're looking for another cleaner, it's because they've got some pain. Um, and the best way that you can talk to somebody is relate to their pain or try and make their pain, you know, you know, in the future, we might be able to fix it for you. So from, from beginning to end, just let them lead it for you. Um, I try not to talk about my price at all if I don't have to. Um, I try to just get to know them at the end of the day. Um, I like to work my charm. I like to be friendly. I like to be personable. I like to ask them what they're going to do this weekend. Um, one of the consults I went on last week, she had said that she was planning to pinch pierogies all weekend. 
And then that inspired me to go get pierogies for dinner and they were delicious. So then I had something to talk to her about when she called on Monday and got my quote. I said, hey, I hit up this restaurant. It was delicious. Have you ever been there? Now we have pierogies in common. And that's a really nice thing to have in common with somebody. Um, and at the end of the day, we did get that contract. And I'm really happy for that because that's just one more great contact that we have. Um, so I guess when, it, when anybody comes into the business, I just try to be myself. And if they don't want to sign on to that, that's a shame. I think I'm pretty nice. Um, and so I guess that would go into the next one. How have I been able to build an amazing team? Is that I am just nice to my, to my employees. I try to be as nice as possible. I tell my employees, call me anytime. If you're having some kind of financial issue, call me. If your boyfriend was mean to you and you just want to like get it off your plate, call me. Your tire, your tire goes flat. We had this a couple weeks ago. Your tire goes flat and you have no idea how to change a tire. Me either. Call Peter. You know, we, I try to be as open with my employees because I'm human too. I don't know how to change a tire. I have problems in my personal life. I want them to know that just because I am their boss and I tell them what to do and sometimes they don't like what I tell them to do, I'm still a human. And I find that when you, when you open up that door, it also opens up that door for them to say, hey, I've had a really tough day. My mental health is deteriorating. I think that I need to take two days off. Is this something that you could work out for me? And that's, that's something that I would be happy to do. I'd rather them be open and honest with me and upfront and tell me that they're having some struggles rather than them let the customer down. Because if, they, if they're distracted and they can't get through their work day without missing some key points of the scope of work, then that's gonna come back on us and that's our reputation. So I try and just get ahead of it and let the teams know that we're, we, don't, we're, we don't call it a family because then you can't hold each other accountable, but that's what it is, open door. And we have trained our employees to take feedback very honestly. You know, we're not going to call you up and say, how dare you miss this toilet? Um, what's going on? You need to be better. It's, hey, who was cleaning the toilets this day? It was this person. I need to speak with them. Why did you miss this toilet? Is there something going on? No, do better. If there is something going on, we'll talk it out and then do better. I also keep it uh, honest feedback both ways. In almost every single employee onboarding that, uh, that I've done, I've told them, hey, you can, tell, you can call me out. I make mistakes, we're all human. I maybe, I've made so many mistakes in the schedule before that the employees call me and they're like, hey, did you mean to book this for six hours? It's only a two hour appointment. And that's, that's what I want them to do. Hold me accountable as much as I hold them accountable. Because at the end of the day, we're all gonna make it work together. And then it just keeps them part of the team. Um, I also try to be as flexible as I can. Like I said earlier, if they're having some kind of personal issue and they need a day off, um, I let them know that if there's something that we can do for them, we will. I don't wanna take hours away from them if I don't have to, but if they need some time, I'm gonna call up the other people on the teams. And they have such great relationships with uh, the other team members that it's easy for me to say, hey, Brett's having a really tough day. It sounds like they maybe need some time off. Would you be open? I always ask if they're open to it. I never, never ask them uh, or never put it on them in a way. I say, are you open to possibly taking care of this for us? And probably nine times out of 10, they say, yep, I'm there, no problem. Because they all have really great relationships with each other too. Because we foster a very open communication kind of um, team space. So um, we also have, we, well, I'm sorry, where Min has, they're having a way to communicate or continue to have amazing people work with us is that we really reward the employees that go above and beyond. We have our bonus system, we offer advances. We just did a, 
a sparkling hill resort. It's a very nice five-star resort here in the Okanagan. All summer, I guess from, from about June until January, we are just putting names in this draw where, you know, if they went above and beyond, they came in, they came in on their day off after they worked six days in a row, they're gonna go in the draw. We're gonna let them know that they went in the draw. Um, if they, you know, went above and beyond and took on a commercial job when the commercial girl couldn't make it out after working a full day of residential, put their name in the draw. And what we ended up doing was an $800, an $800 two night stay at a five-star resort. And so they're constantly being rewarded with this. Um, uh, as well as lots of really great feedback. But if they start to lean to the wayside and they're not going to be an A employee that goes above and beyond um, because we go above and beyond for them, then we categorize them as B and C employees. We're going to give all of, we're going to give more hours to our A employees than we give to our C employees. I'm going to offer a lot more grace to my A employees than I will my C employees because they've shown me that they value what we give to them. And I think that's, I think that's really important. I think that's something that Carrie and I have worked really, really hard to put in place. Um, and we worked together on this because it wasn't always easy. It, the mentality used to be, well, they're just employees. If you treat them as just employees, they're gonna treat you as just a job and they're not going to put their heart into it. And I find that cleaning, you need a lot of heart. You need, um, you need somebody there to tell you that you're doing good. Um, we've also noticed that our commercial teams don't get as much positive feedback as our vacation rental teams because they're doing regular cleans instead of you know five-star vacation rental cleans. So we're finding ways to show them that we do love them and we do care and you guys are doing great. So we're trying, it's always a work in progress. So that's how, that's how I treat my employees. And I don't know, I, I moved to the Okanagan and my one friend is, is my mom. <laughs> but I like to think that my employees are my friends too. They, I laugh with them on the phone. I make spelling errors and they call me out. It's, it's nice. So I like to be friends with them, but also have to be their boss, which is hard sometimes. So that's all I have to say about that. Back to doing my job. The working from home versus working in the office goes right back into the motivation. When I first started with Carrie, we were working in a home office and it was really easy for me to uh, wear sweatpants every day and get up and go have a nap if the phones were quiet. Um, and those were the bad habits that I picked up from working from home during COVID because uh, at my dealership job, if all my work was done at, at month end, great. You know, as, as long as my work was done at month end, but then the three weeks before month end, nobody was ever checking on me. I could do whatever I wanted. I remember working at the beach a couple times, tethering my phone, not very good habits. So um, what we did is Carrie had approached me. She said, we can afford an assistant or we can afford an office which one would you prefer? And I instantly said office. I get to come into this office every day. I'm actually in my office today, unlike the previous two calls, I was working from home. Uh, we've got beautiful green walls. We've got, um, I've got this big, huge desk. I get so much more stuff done sitting in a chair and actually looking at everything than I do sitting at home because I can just lean back and do nothing. So it, if you're gonna look for a brat, you need somebody that, you know, thrives in an office environment because it's not easy. I, um, I love my office, but I do like working from home from time to time, but I do choose the quiet days. Yesterday was a really quiet day. I knew nothing really was gonna be going on. So I chose to work from home. And I got, I got some, some really like tedious email stuff done, but, I didn't get any um, any uh, sales stuff done. I didn't further the business anyways. So um, when I am in the office, I do have many routines that get me through the week. And one thing that I did find is that 
having a monthly task schedule really helps. So what I have is a, a blank calendar, you know, uh, first to the 31st. And I've given myself little milestones of what I should be have completed by these certain days. So that if I do have a quiet day, which I've had a very quiet day today, I've got lots of very tedious paperwork off my desk, which is nice. I'll have a nice quiet weekend. Um, when I do have a quiet day, I'm able to look at my task list and see where I am, see what I should be doing. What, what have I almost forgotten about? Um, it also helps when I'm getting calls for, I just got a call for, hey, can we have a consult on February 18th? That's a whole month away. And I said, yeah, no problem, right? Um, but I was able to look at my task schedule and see what I should be completing during that third week of February and know that if I book myself several consults in that same day, I'm not gonna lose a whole day's work. I'm able to look at the long-term range and, and think you know, ahead of time. I guess that's prioritization and time management, which is a very uh, useful skill to have, but I didn't always have. I've created that through my processes and my systems. Um, I'm also a sucker for a checklist. Um, I use a, a do, delegate, or delete kind of uh, way of doing my emails. Either you do it right now, you delegate it to yourself later through a checklist, or to de delegate it to somebody else, i.e. my assistant, um, or you delete it. If it has no purpose to be in your email, get rid of it. I try, I work on a zero email system where at the end of the week, I don't want to have anything unread because I want to start on Monday completely fresh and know that I can complete all the tasks that I've set out for myself for this week. So I'm, I'm a sucker for checklists and I'm trying to teach my assistant how to use checklists. And, you know, if you've got 15 things on the checklist, you don't start from the top. You go, you kind of go through and find something that you can do right now. You've got five minutes before your next Zoom call, pick something on your list, get it done. It's not easy, but once you get going, it starts to be a little bit fun because at the end of the day, you get to check everything off and you feel like you've accomplished something. Um, and then when it comes to keeping everything organized, when I came on with Carrie and with this laptop that I'm on right now, it's the original laptop. There was just folders and folders of stuff and 4,000 unread emails and uh, stuff in our jogger from five years ago. I try to keep everything as minimal as possible. When it comes to filing, I try to keep everything in one location. Of course, everybody should, that makes sense. But when, when Carrie was doing it on her own, she was just treading water. I came in and I started saying, let's get rid of these emails. Let's unsubscribe from this stuff. Let's give you some folders. So in my Google Drive, I have a maximum of five folders. Client information, employee information, office information, and two other, oh, I have my uh, SOPs. And then I have, I'm just gonna go look at it real quick. Um, oh, I guess it's four. I only have four, which is really great. And within those, within those files, Everything should be pretty accessible. Um, I always say I've reached my clicking capacity for the day. Um, and when you have to click, 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 click to get somewhere, and then you realize you've ended up in the wrong folder, it is so frustrating to go back and figure out where you started. If you have a system that, you know, maximum, maximum four clicks to get to where you need to go, it's going to reduce your click fatigue. Um, and it's going to make things a little bit more organized. I always try and start things with, with the date at the beginning so that the most recent thing that I've done is at the top. And um, the most simple, the most simple um, naming process as possible. So that when it comes down to it, you're not trying to remember, where did I put this? What would have made sense? If you have a really minimal, easy access system, you're just going, it's just going to be muscle memory to get to where you need to go. 
and it just reduces the frustration on your end. Um, and I can go into that further, but kind of tough. My my boyfriend is an engineer, and his his filing system, I hear him, and it drives me crazy. And I think, how do you know what you're doing? He goes, I don't. I have no idea where my stuff is. Um, I've tried to teach him. He doesn't get it. <laughs> um, and then I guess my last point here, um, Carrie is my mom. There's no shame about that. There's no hiding that. She's my mom. If you really look at me right now and look at her, you'll see we look identical, except she's 20 years older. And she raised me on the same standards or the same core values that she has put into this business, which is do good, be good, do what is required and work as a team. I've always worked on the do good, be good. Um, and it's so important. I think that's really what makes me who I am is that at the end of the day, I just try and be kind. I try to be kind, I try to be nice. I try to be understanding. It's not always easy, but the, sec like the secondary personal core value that I have is it's all about perspective. If you come into everything with positive intention, things are gonna start to work out for you. Um, and when I say come into it with positive intention, I mean, um, you know, I'm going to come into this meeting with a positive intention that I'm going to try and share who I am with this group of people that I barely know um, and hope that at the end of the day, they take some good from it. If I came in here thinking you can't learn anything from me and I know what I'm doing, nobody would benefit from that. So I try and go into Every, every console, every tough meeting I have with my employees, I just try and be kind and understanding. And I think that really benefits me as a person. And it's also really brought me down, calmed me down. When I worked at the dealership, I just assumed that everybody thought that I was just some young little girl who didn't know what she was doing. It doesn't help that I have a boy's name. I'd walk into the showroom and they'd think, where's Mr. Bahanas? And I'm like, it's me. <laughs> I'm going to sell you an excavator. So um, through working in this business, um, I've really grown as a, as a person, as, a, as an entrepreneur as well. But I think at the end of the day, the kindness and positive intention is the, the key part to me. If you have a question, either put it into the messenger chat down here, um, or you can unmute and ask Brett a question. Um, some things that you mentioned is something that I got to do personally, the email thing. I have over 14,000 emails that are sitting in my email inbox. Um, and if Alex was here, he's worse. Right. And the thing with us is we, we, things, there's so, so many things happening. And if you're, if you're a business owner that has a team, uh, that don't have people like, you know, somebody to, to help you like Brett and, and, and manage any of these things, then. Um, it's definitely good for you guys to implement some of the things that Brett's doing currently to keep things organized. How are you guys currently getting your rental client is what Marley asked. Yep. Um, a lot of it is word of mouth, um, which we're really, we're really lucky. We, we have a great reputation here and, um, we're lucky for that, but it's, it didn't start out like that. Uh, Carrie had a handful of, uh, of clients and then last year, something happened. I don't know what happened, but we started getting all of these clients. And um, what I did is I called each one of them. If we would get an email inquiry, I'd ask if I could call them because it gave me a chance to start to like build my, my script, um, start to, you know, they, they start to ask the same questions. And then suddenly, suddenly my script grew to where I'm answering their questions before they could even ask them. So I always try and get on a call with them right away and try to just be as happy and open-minded as possible. Some of them have no idea what they're doing. And it was so easy for me to say back to them, me neither, let's learn together. Um, so we get lots of our vacation rental clients through word of mouth. And um, I think just the, the, person, the personability of talking to them makes them feel a lot better. And then if I can, I do try and get there and meet them and go over everything with them. Although lots of them, and I'm sure you probably deal with this as well, they don't live locally. So we try also to do like a Zoom call, sit with them face to face because you, you can see if they're gonna roll your, their eyes at you. <laughs> at the very least, you can see what's going on in their head or in their face. 
um, and try to navigate that conversation a little bit better. Uh, but I think, Brett, you mentioned something that I feel like a lot of business owners don't do is like when you get an email, most business owners would email them back. And then they go back and forth and then somebody's going to stop emailing and then boom, you guys just lost business. Yeah. Converting it into a phone conversation will allow you guys to convert a lot more of the opportunities or acquires that you guys get. Um, they're not going to ask to get on the phone call with you. You would have to go out of your way to call them like, Hey, I just got, you know, an email from you. How's everything going? Let's chat. Let's build a relationship um, over the phone. Cool. What said, how are you training your employees? On Jobber, do you have any of them who are not tech savvy with the app and how do you manage this? That one's actually really tough. And when I saw that question, I went, oh, I wish I had an answer. I wish I had the right answer. Um, I don't go through very much training when it comes to Jobber. I try to make it seem as easy as possible, <clears throat> but then I tell them, call me if you have any problems. Um, I do know that the app is sometimes hard to navigate. I know that there is hidden information. Um, so the best way that I do this is I, of course, we have our office phone, but I have my personal phone. So I try to sit with them on the phone and walk through it at the same time and say, hey, do you see this green box right here? Yep, that's your timer. If you go down to the bottom of the screen here and I do it, I mirror what they're doing on their on their side because I don't use the app from day to day. I'm on the desktop. Um, we do have some that are not tech savvy. Um, and so I try to pair them up with, with employees that maybe know a little bit more and say, oh, just get Sarah to show you. See what Sarah's doing. Um, because Jobber, I think, is pretty confusing sometimes. That's awesome. Um... FYI, I hope that answers your question. I think when it comes to hiring employees and training them on these things as well, you, you just have to expect them to make mistakes or not know how to use it. Um, because a lot of the time, these softwares that help you save more time, it's going to take a lot of time in the beginning for you to train your employees yourself on how to use it and then start saving time. So perfect. Um, any other questions for Brett? We have uh, in here, Sean, Becky, Michael, any questions on your end? Tommy, Marco, Clavion, Efwa, Marley, any other questions? Or in fact, you know, anything that you've taken away that you're going to start implementing either for yourself, your employee, for your business that you guys want to share and get some feedback with Brett? Let's see. Boom, boom. No, everybody, it's quite. Thanks, thanks so much for sharing. That was really inspiring, Brad. Like I always, I don't even shy away from it. I'm always telling Carrie how I need to steal you because she's too lucky. She has you and I, I want you, like I want my Brad, right? So um, that's really awesome. Thank you for sharing. Um, I, I could relate to the, you know, especially with being overwhelmed. I'm a one man show. I do have employees, but on the administrative side, it's only me right now doing everything. So sometimes I do get overwhelmed and I get that um, same feeling when you don't want to call someone like, oh, I'll call them tomorrow or I'll do it. Like, so <laughs> I've, I've been there. So when you were talking about that, I was like, oh yeah, that's me just procrastinating because I'm tired and I don't want to do it. So that was like one takeaway that I, uh, I, I could relate with and just like um, the way that you're treating your employees and you know just being kind sticking to the core values that you guys are building um, which is really awesome I would love to create the same you know culture around my staff and just my company in general um, so there's so much I'm taking away from away from this for sure thank you so much you're welcome that's Great. awesome Carrie's actually talked about you quite a bit too. Um, and she she's brought brought that up as well that you've asked, how do I get a Brett? And I said, she's just gonna have to birth her own. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I'm I'm working on it. I'm I I'm really hoping that I I'm I'm hopefully gonna do like um, a job ad soon just to get see if I can get someone, just so that it frees up more time for me to. Uh, you know, focus on like growing the business and doing more stuff and being able to go on more um, walkthroughs. Um, so yeah, but she did give me your email. So I'm going to bug you later. Reach out, whatever. All good. It's awesome. Um, F what thanks for sharing. And then the feedback. Um, I think something that 
Brett, you brought up and F brought up what's like getting on the phone call and not delaying it. Um, something that I've learned and I know you guys have learned from experience as well. It's like when, when it comes to your, the business, building the business, the problems that you're facing within your business is because of you. They, you not making the call is a personal issue that then, you know, mirrors into the business. So a lot of the things that you guys are struggling with right now, either getting clients, closing deals, um, showing up and actually, you know, helping your clients and your team out. A lot of the time it's just you. Like, I, I don't, I don't want to say that in a bad way where I'm like, you're a bad business owner. What I'm trying to say is there's things that you need to work on personally before you can see your business succeed. Something that I always mention is like, you got to be a successful person in regards of like, uh, before running your business, uh, to have a successful business. Um, and Brett, Brett can go out right now and, and build her own business as well. Um, but the beautiful thing that Brett kind of brought into my attention when it comes to finding someone like you is finding someone who has the same vision, the same principles in regards of, you know, how they look at the business, how they look at life. And, you know, she raised you. So a lot of the things kind of correlate. Um, but for example, Ethel, when you're looking to hire or bring somebody on board, find somebody that relates to you in regards of the same vision that you want to have for the company, the same principles. That's something that Carrie speaks about all the time is the employee, the team have to follow the principle that you've set. And if they don't agree with it, they can't be a part of, you know, your, your culture, your company. So that's awesome. We have Lee, what is going on? Lee, I wish you join on a little bit earlier, actually at the beginning, because the whole call here today was absolutely uh, fired, very, very valuable, but we have the recording of this and we'll post it in the course uh, for you to check out. But that is awesome. Brett, thank you so much. Um, any other last minute um, questions for Brett here? We have seven minutes before it hits 5 p.m. Eastern. I don't know what time it is where you guys are at, but I know you guys want to enjoy the rest of your Friday going into the weekend here. So any last minute questions? Uh, Marley asked where she can get the sheet that I shared, the questions. Um, Marley, I'll send it to you. Uh, FO wants the document too. No problem. You guys can use that and then use the recording, put it together, and you guys can you know, use the questions that's referenced um, on that sheet there. Any questions? Anything in regards of what Brett covered today? All good? Brett, any last minute? Comments? No, I've talked plenty, I think. <laughs> that is awesome. Um, perfect. I appreciate you so much for hopping on here today. I know a lot of every, pretty much everybody here would love to have you on again to go over maybe one specific topic and cover it for a whole hour as well. Um, and Michael, thanks for joining on in here. Um, you know, always showing up. If, if there's any questions that anybody has, um, again, the group chat that we've created on Facebook for our group members. You guys have access to Michael and uh, Brett. You guys can contact her through her email. If you guys want to put it on Facebook group, we'll get it. Cool. Uh, actually, I do have a question. Awesome. Go ahead. Um, Cause I know that Carrie deals with uh, residential, I mean, uh, rentals, sorry, rentals and property managers too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, question I have is um, I told Carrie about this. Um, so I, uh, I, uh, I'm gonna try to put this. So I have um, uh, opportunity for, um, I have a list of, uh, let's see here. I think it's like seven uh, property managers, uh, contact information to reach out to them. Uh, it leads, it's gonna lead to around 85 accounts. Um, this will be my first account. So um, the question I have is, yeah, it's a lot. Um, question is, I am, the, I spent the entire day today for eight hours. I mean, I've been doing multiple things, but for eight hours, I've been trying to like, I can't come up with a the correct way to reach out to them. Like I have, I have everything I need. I have the people, I have uh, the contact information. I even have a property manager who's going to vouch for me. Um, but I am not sure how to reach out to them because I don't want to mess it up. Because I know there's all about first impressions. And the last thing I want to do is say something that silly, which is, I actually want to go back. So this is kind of silly for me to ask because I've been, I've been in the industry for 17 years. And when I was working for somebody else, no problem. But this is the first time, you know, now I'm doing my own thing. I am like second guessing everything I do, um, which is making me, anyways, the question I have for you is um, how would you go about uh, reaching out to a new uh, property manager? Or let's say you, re you receive, or it doesn't have to be a property manager, but like, let's say you received a, a very an opportunity for a big um, a 
a big account uh, or multiple accounts, um, how would you go about reaching out to them? Does that make sense? Yep. No. Yep. And I would just call, Come. call and be yourself. I yeah. think that um, I think that me being myself and you know, I didn't know what I was doing when I came to come work for Carrie. I don't know how to clean and it's kind of embarrassing. I don't know how to clean, but um, I was honest about that. I told the vacation rental clients, hey, this is the, like, I'm new to this. I'm really excited to learn, but if you just call them and, and be yourself and what's, what's, the, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. They're gonna know your name at least. Uh, at least when, when it comes time to it, down to it, um, if they don't have anybody lined up, at least they know your name. Right. So would you and, just say, I'm sorry, go on. Uh, I know that's probably not the answer that you're looking for, but I would just call them. Would, you say, would you say call them and then do a follow-up email afterwards? Yes. Yeah. So a lot of the times when I talk to a client on the phone, I mean, I do a lot of the talking and I ramble sometimes. Um, so at the end of it, I'll say, I'm just going to uh, send you an introductory email, just recapping everything that we've just talked about. And I do just have like a, I just copy and paste all the information that I have, you know, but then I, I tailor it to the things that I did touch on in the phone call um, because um, I like for them to lead it. Once it comes down to it, um, if they have any more questions, I can say, I'd love to set up another, another meeting with you. Can I come by? I'd love to see the place, um, see what you're doing there. Um, but a follow-up email is really great because then they can actually have it in, in writing because some of the times I talk to these people on the phone for 25 minutes. How, do, how are they going to remember all the really great things that I said to them? So a follow-up email is definitely great. So that actually was helpful. I actually, you gave me back my confidence. So I'm going to, after, after this call, or after this, I'm going to call them. So. Yeah, you can do it. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, I want the biggest thing that, that will help you it's understanding that the worst case scenario will never outweigh the best thing that can happen. Um, it will never like worst case, you get a no best case. You get a new contract, 85, you know, units and relationships that will be able to, you know, help you a crap ton within your business and, you know, help you outside of your, you know, your, your business as well. I'm telling you right now, worst case scenario, if you just, just sit down like, what's the worst case that can happen? They say, no, they say they don't like me. So what? move on. There's so many more opportunities out there. Carrie talks about abundance, operate on abundance. And the reason why you perform really well when you work for this other company, because you, you understand that if you, if this person says no, they already have many things in the work to get more. That's why you invested into the program to learn how to do email marketing is so you get more opportunities like that. And, and understanding that things will come. Trust me. If you show up every single day, have a goal in mind, things will just fall into place. And again, the worst case scenario will never outweigh the, the best thing that can happen for you in that relationship. And if you don't get the, the, the opportunity, guess what? You've learned something. There's a lesson. Like Brett said, last year was one of the hardest years of her life, but it's actually one of the, the best years because of how many lessons she's learned to have her now sit at the office and not have to deal with the things that she's dealt with last year. Right? So you got it. Um, if there's any questions, feel free to just reach out, put in the Facebook group, the group, uh, private group that you're, you're in and everybody will be able to help you in regards to answering any questions you have, man. You have, you have the experience. You have more experience than a lot of people on this channel or, or in Zoom today. Um, you, you have experience in sales. You have experience in doing this for other companies. Why not you? Like, why not perform for yourself, you know? Um, cool. So Marco said, I apologize. I've come here a little late and missed a lot of information. No problem. This thing is recorded. Um, and I will post it into the course and then I'll have Eric on our team, send everybody kind of how to get access to it and rewatch it. It's something that you do want to rewatch because this, the last hour has been amazing. Brett, thank you so much for hopping on and doing this. And, um, I'll let everybody go. I got to jump on another call here, but if you guys have any other questions, reach out to, uh, Brett personally as well.